planning what tattoos they wanted as soon as they turned 18. I want a moon on my wrist. I'm getting my zodiac skin. I too had a future tattoo picked out. A small Tolkien dragon. I want it on my forearm. A decade later, I am still tattoo free. At 28, I daydream not of getting tattoos, but of top surgery. My parents are getting a little better with my pronouns, but they still slip up. Is she coming? E is coming. Look, she's up. E's up. Why are you doing this to us? Think of it as an exercise to keep your brain agile and sharp, better than Sudoku. Later. I know she said that in a moment of frustration. She's actually trying really hard, but it still hurts a little. This is the first time I saw myself referred to as E in an email, in a work email. I experienced a startling wave of joy. Ring. Hello. Hello, I'm calling from Kaiser about a pap smear exam. Fuck. Look, I really don't want to have another PAPS exam. Kaiser recommends that you have one every three years, and according to our records, the last one was over five years ago. I am very well aware. Have you been sexually active since our last appointment? Yes. Can I schedule for you an exam on the 26th? I guess so. Great. I'll email a reminder. God damn it. I dressed very carefully the day of my exam, even though I knew I would shortly be removing all of my clothes. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Pronoun pin, a flannel from Goodwill over a t-shirt from the internet. Pants from the men's section over boys' brief. Converse over favorite socks. I can't. It can't be as bad as last time. It can't possibly be as bad as last time. Spoiler, it was worse. Maya, coming. Please change into the robe. Your doctor will be here in a few minutes. Okay, breathe, breathe. Hello, I'll be doing your exam today. Hello. I have a few things I want to explain before the exam. exam. Okay. I identify as gender non-binary and I use the pronouns EM ear. I have a lot of dysphoria around my genitals and I've been actively avoiding this exam for years. I'm really nervous. Thank you for telling me. I'm going to use the smallest spies speculum and go as quickly as I can, all right? Okay. The speculum entering my body felt like a knife being shoved in my vagina. I screamed and immediately started scrubbing. The doctor quickly withdrew. I think this would be easier if you took a pain medication and maybe an anti-anxiety pill first. I'm going to write you a prescription and make you a new appointment, okay? I'll leave you to get dressed, but I'll see you again in two weeks, yeah. I caught a sight of the speculum as I got as I shakily got dressed. It was bloody. At the pharmacy, I received five milligrams of oxycodone and one milligram of lazorapam. Then I went home. How'd it go? It didn't. Can you drive me to a new appointment in two weeks? Of course. Hug? Yeah. Memories of the second appointment are hazy. I took the pills about an hour before we left the house. The doctor was able to complete the exam. My mom drove me home. I threw up in the bathroom. Then I crawled into bed and slept for five or six hours. A few weeks later, I received a very short letter from my doctor. The results of my examination was normal. Nothing to report. In spring 2017, I attended a march for trans rights in the middle-sized liberal hometown. I knew we'd be walking, so I dressed for comfort. There was a chance of rain, so I carried a raincoat. When I arrived, it seemed like everyone had dressed up except me. I feel like a total square right now. Why didn't I wear something cool? I don't want to spend this year looking straight, but how do I look more queer, specifically more gender queer? I love florals, I love colors, but all I own are jeans and t-shirts and boring solid colors. How do I end up with a wardrobe of bland teenage boy? I went to I want to define myself by the what I am instead of what I am not. What would I wear if money were no object? Well, that's easy. Alexander McQueen. In an effort to achieve the high fantasy gay wizard prince look of my dreams, I began giving myself strict shopping guidelines. No t-shirts, no solid colors. I'm only looking at clothes that Teako would consider. Today I'm looking for things that remind me of Johnny Weir. Would Harry Styles wear this shirt? Slowly I began to collect things that felt queer and magical, approximately actual size. These gently chime as I walk. These days, every time I wear a floral out of the house, it feels like a small but meaningful victory. My family recently welcomed the first baby in our new generation. I can't get over how small he is. Wow. My cousin Josh, his wife Faith. We were wondering what he should call, what he should call you once he grows up. I don't know any good gender-neutral term for aunt. Can I be his librarian or cartoonist? Maybe by the time he learns to talk, we'll have invented some new words. Thank you so much for the emails about your pronouns. I am proud to be part of your family, and I'm grateful that he will grow up knowing you. That means the world to me. 
In fall 2016, I started teaching a single day comic workshops to junior high kids at local libraries. You can use as many or as few panels as you'd like for the next assignment, but remember, in comics, space affects time. I have each group for just three hours. I pack in as much as I can. Every time I get ready to meet a new group of students, I wonder, should I introduce myself to this batch using my pronouns? I wish I didn't fear my identity is fear that my identity is too political for a classroom. My time with these students is so short. Is starting with a potentially confusing topic like pronouns a good use of that time? So far, I've always decided it isn't. During the snack break of a recent class, a mom came up to me. My daughter loves to draw. I'm so glad she's getting to see a female artist role model. When I was a girl, I had no role models who looked like me. There were no women doctors, no professors, no CEOs. I wanted to say I never saw role models like myself either. I didn't even meet another out non-binary person until grad school, but I feared that the truth would ruin her moment. I kept quiet. The kids I teach are primarily AFAB, and they range in age from 11 to 14. Those were my first big years of gender confusion, but I doubt anyone would have guessed just by looking at me. Looking around my class today, I wonder if any of those kids are trans or non-binary but don't have the words for it yet. How many of them have never seen a non-binary adult? Is my, science actually, is my silence actually a disservice to all of them? Goodbye, take care, keep drawing comics. Thank you, bye, bye. Having a non-binary or trans teacher in junior high would have meant the world to me. Every time I fail to give my pronouns, I feel like a coward. But coming out can still be really scary even after all this time. Could a parent complain and get me fired? Their kids only have me for one day. If the parents hate me, they never have to see me again, and I think the administration would support me. I think I'm carrying more fear than I need. Next time, next time I will come out. A note to, to my parents. Though I've struggled with being your daughter, I am so glad that I am your child.